So far, we've only written what are called sequential programs. That means that the commands in the program are performed in the sequence in which they appear in the program, and all commands are executed every time the program is run. This is actually pretty unusual, though. In general, any but the simplest program will make decisions and selectively perform computations based on those decisions. The types of decisions that programs make are generally based on what are called logical and relational operators, which are the topic of this video. As I said, most computer programs will need to make decisions and selectively execute commands based on those decisions. This is called flow control. The flow of the calculations through the program is controlled by the decisions being made by the program. The other terminology relative to this process is that commands are executed conditionally. Some condition or set of conditions must be met before a given command is executed. The types of decisions made by most computer programs are the result of simple true or false conditions, or questions whose answers are either yes or no. So, the general decision being made is that if this is true, then do this one thing, but if it isn't true, do something else. Special operators, called relational and logical operators, are used to decide whether something is either true or false. However, to understand how MATLAB's relational and logical operators work, it's first necessary to understand how the computer re represents the concepts of true and false. As with anything else, computers represent the concepts of true and false as numbers. Since these numbers are interpreted as logical values, either true or false, they're called logical values. As usual, only the user, you, know for sure whether a number should be interpreted as a logical value or as just a regular number, and you need to use it appropriately. Specifically, when you use a number in MATLAB as a logical value, MATLAB considers any number that's not zero to represent the logical concept of true. When you ask MATLAB's operators or functions to return a logical value, MATLAB always returns a 1 to represent true. Alternately, in the context of a logical value, 0 is interpreted as corresponding to false. So, we have yet another thing to keep track of. Recall that MATLAB's mathematical operators required the user to make sure that the operands that were supplied to them met the rules for the type of arithmetic that was being done. Likewise, MATLAB's logical and relational operators require the user to keep track of how those operators interpret the operands that are sent to them. Now I'll give you the list of MATLAB's relational operators. Remember that for these operators, the operands are interpreted as numbers and the output is a logical true or false, a 1 or a 0. In MATLAB, the operator greater than is represented by the typical mathematical symbol greater than. Less than is implemented with the mathematical symbol less than. Greater than or equal to and less than or equal to are implemented with the greater than or less than symbols followed by an equal sign. The logical operator used to check whether two numbers are equal to one another is simply two equal signs. Finally, the logical operation which checks whether two numbers are not equal to one another is a tilde followed by an equal sign. All of these operators have the same precedence, and any of them will be done after all mathematical operators are done. So the command 5 plus 3, checking to see whether that is equal to 8, first adds 5 and 3 to get 8. It then checks to see if 8 is equal to 8. That's true, and MATLAB will return a 1. As I said, all relational operators are of the same precedence. So relational operators are performed from left to right, just as mathematical operations of the same precedence are performed left to right. So the command 2 less than 5 less than 3 first checks whether 5 is greater than 2. That's true, so this returns a 1. Now it checks to see, the, see whether 1 is less than 3. That's also true, so this statement is true and I get a 1 out of it. 
This is different from what you might consider to be regular mathematical notation where 2 less than x less than 3 would be not true if x were equal to 5. I'll do a couple of very quick demonstrations of the relational operators just so you can get an idea of what the results of the operators look like. First, if I type 1 tilde equals 2, I get a response of 1 since 1 isn't equal to 2 and the relation is true. If I type 1 equals equals 2 to check to see whether 1 is the same as 2, the result is 0. 1 is not equal to 2 and the result is false. Next I want to take a quick and informal look at some issues associated with equalities and inequalities. One predefined variable in MATLAB is called EPS. Computers represent values to only a finite precision. EPS is the minimum value by which two numbers have to differ before MATLAB can tell that they're actually different. So I can check to see whether 1 is equal to 1 plus EPS. This is false since MATLAB can tell the difference between numbers that are separated by EPS. However, if I type 1 equals equals 1 plus EPS over 2, now I get a 1 back. MATLAB considers the number 1 plus EPS over 2 to be exactly the same as 1. This is called numerical round-off error and can be a problem with numerical analysis. I'll talk more about numerical precision and round-off errors in a later chapter. Finally, I'll try to determine whether a particular value lies within a certain interval using only the MATLAB relational operators. I'll set x equals 3 and then type 0 less than x less than 4, which is typical mathematical notation to define that x is between 0 and 4. MATLAB returns a 1 for this, which seems reasonable since 3 is between 0 and 4, but that's not why the result is true. What's actually happening is that MATLAB's checking whether 0 is less than x. That's true, so a 1 gets returned for that part of the expression. Then MATLAB checks to see whether that 1 is less than 4. Since that's true, MATLAB returns a 1. But now I'll redo the problem with x equals 6. If I type x equals 6, and then 0 less than x less than 4, I get 1 from this, or true, which may not be what's expected. 6 is not between 0 and 4. In this case, again, MATLAB first checks whether x is greater than 0. 6 is greater than 0, so this operator returns a 1. Since this logical 0 is less than 4, the overall result is true. So, to check whether a particular value lies within an interval, we need to use a logical operator in conjunction with the relational operators. Finally, I'll talk about the logical operators that are available in MATLAB. For logical operators, both the operands and the result are logical values. So, you can still use any number as an operand to the logical operators, but MATLAB is going to interpret these values as logical values. So, operands that are not zero are interpreted as being true, while operands that are zero are interpreted as false. As with the relational operators, the logical operators return either a one or a zero. One's returned if the result's true, and zero's returned if the result is false. There are three logical operators that I'll use in this course. The first of the operators is a logical AND, which is implemented in MATLAB with an ampersand symbol. The result of an AND operation is true only if both operands are true. If either or both of the operands are false, then the result of the operation is false and MATLAB returns a zero. So for example, pi and two, this is not zero, so it's true. This is not zero, it's true. These are both true. The result is going to be a one. Pi and zero, this is now not true. If either of these are not true, I get a zero back for false. The next operator is a logical OR. 
in MATLAB, it's represented by a vertical bar or what's called a pipe symbol. On most keyboards, it's the uppercase version of the backslash key. The result of an OR operation is true if either one or both of the operands is true. So, as long as at least one condition is met, the result of an OR is true. So, for example, 3 OR 0 is true because 3 is interpreted as true, this is false and only 0 or 0 will be interpreted as false, so both operands are false. The final operator I want to mention is the NOT operation. It's represented by a tilde symbol. NOT simply inverts the logic of a single operand. So, if you apply a NOT to an operand that's true, you get back a 0 or false. So, NOT 6 returns 0. 6 is true, NOT 6 is false. Not zero returns a one. This is false, the opposite of that is true, a one is returned. There are actually a couple of other logical operators in MATLAB, but I won't use them in this course. They are AND and OR with what's called short circuiting. The symbols of the two operands are two ampersands and the two pipe symbols, respectively. These operators can be more efficient than the single operand version, but their use won't be essential for us in this class. The precedence of all the logical operators is the same. And all the logical operators have a lower precedence than the relational operators. So the overall precedence of the operators I've talked about so far is, first, mathematical operations are performed relative to their rules of precedence. Relational operators are evaluated next. And finally, after all else is done, the logical operators are evaluated. Parentheses, as usual, can be used to override the default precedence. So, for example, in the operation 2 plus 3 equals 5, or 3 greater than 7, the first thing that gets done is the mathematical operation. 2 and 3 are added to get 5. Now we have two relational operators and a logical operator. The relational operators are done first and they're done from left to right. So now we check whether 5 is equal to 5. That's true, so this returns a 1. Then we check this. 3 is not greater than 7, so that returns a 0. The last thing is done is evaluating this logical OR. So one or the other of these is true. So this overall operation will return a 1. In this demo, I'm going to revisit the problem that I did at the end of the last demo. In that demo, I wanted to decide whether a value of x was between 0 and 4. When I do this, what I'm really checking is that x is both greater than 0 and less than 4. So I can use a logical AND in conjunction with two relational operators to check this condition. So first, I'll double check my value of x. That's still 6. Next, I'll type 0 less than x, an ampersand, and then x less than 4. In this statement, I'm taking advantage of the precedence of operations. Both of the relational operators will be evaluated before the logical operator. So the first statement checks whether x is greater than 0. That's true, so a 1 is returned. Next, the statement checks whether x is less than 4. That's false, so a 0 is returned. The AND operation between true and false is false, since both operands have to be true for the result to be true. So this statement should return a 0, meaning that 6 is not between 0 and 4. I'll check this by pressing Enter. Now I'll redo the calculation with x equals 3. Now both conditions, x greater than 0 and x less than 4, are true, so the result of the AND operation should be true, or 1. I'll use the up arrow to repeat the statement. Looks like the command does just what I expected it to do. That's really just about all there is to know about logical and relational operators. Now, you do need to know how these operators work in order to use them successfully when you're creating a program that makes decisions. 
However, a lot of the details, for example, the fact that numerical values are used to represent logical true and false, won't be terribly important later. That's because there are programming structures and commands that implement the decisions by working hand in hand with the logical and relational operators. When these tools are used, we can just think of the outcome of a logical expression to be either true or false, without really worrying about what the numerical values corresponding to true and false actually are. For example, you can use logical values as indices to an array and think of the corresponding values in the array as either satisfying or not satisfying some criteria. The result of the operation is either true or false. There are also a set of programming structures that work directly with the result of relational and logical operators. In the next couple of videos, I'll talk about using logical array indices and introduce one type of decision-making structure, commonly called an if block.